Hello, everybody. Um, today we're going to be looking at uh, Chapter 6 from Math 11. Um, we're looking at systems of linear equations. Uh, some of the big ideas we're going to look at, we're going to solve problems on modeling linear inequalities with two variables. Um, here are some of the key words that we have to uh, recall, or uh, some of this might be new. Uh, inequality is another type of uh, number sentence used in algebra, and this is called an inequality. So normally, to this point, we had an equal sign. Um, so an inequality, um, again, you've probably seen these before, or at least you should have. Um, we have the less than symbol. So an example would be x plus y is less than 2. Um, then we have the greater than symbol. Uh, 2x is greater than 2y is an example. Uh, the third symbol there we have is uh, less than or equal to. Uh, so we have the equation um, y is less than or equal to x minus 1. So this is a, something that you probably remember from math 10 where we have y equals x minus 2, well, then we're going to look at graphing the inequality of y less than or equal to x minus 2. In the last inequality, we're going to look for the symbol is greater than or equal to, and then we have this one, the inequality 2x plus y is greater than or equal to 7. Uh, linear inequalities uh, in two variables represented graphically. Its boundaries are divided in the Cartesian plane of two halves. We'll see that uh, later on in the lesson. You'll see what that means. Solution region is the shaded area uh, of the graph uh, that represents the uh, any coordinate that is found um, to satisfy the inequality. Again, we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, and if the symbol is less than or greater than, uh, we use a dashed or dotted line. And if the inequality is less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, then we use a solid line like we normally do with graph. And again, I'll show you that when we complete the examples. Um, some solution sets uh, are just what the possible solutions are. So, for example, if we had the equation 3x plus 5 is equal to 11, the solution set is 2, so we solve for 2. Um, sometimes you can have more than one answer. For example, if x squared is equal to x, then there's two uh, solutions that uh, satisfy that equation. x could be 0, because 0 squared is 0, and x could be 1, x, uh, 1 squared is 1. And then we have a um, solution set when it's all real numbers. Uh, if x plus 1 is equal to x plus 1, then x will be every real number possible. And then we have what's called a continuous graph, but that's where we connect a set of numbers. Um, so there's always numbers in between, so decimals, uh, fractions, for example. Uh, half plane is the region on one side of the graph uh, of linear equation. So cutting it in half, again, it might not always look half, um, uh, because your graph only has a, you know, a, a portion of uh, what you're looking at. So today what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, 6.1, linear inequalities. So 6.1, graphing linear inequalities. Um, you're going to remember when we had the equation in the form ax plus by equals c um, was a graph uh, that is a straight line. What you did when we solved these equations, you solved using its intercepts, its x and y intercepts, right? You may remember that, x and y intercepts. So that was last year. Um, when you were in uh, grade 10. So anytime you had this form, usually that was the way to do it. Again, you could rearrange it. I use the second form quite quite frequently, and that's um, when you have uh, slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Um, there you can use its slope and its y. intercepts. And you may recall that. And again, if you're not sure what I'm talking about here, when we start to question uh, the examples, we'll do the, exactly that. Okay? So, um, in the first one here, uh, you could solve it either way. We're going to graph it using y because mx plus b. So, what we would have to do first is we'd have to take our equation and we'd have to rearrange it. Okay? So, that would be our first goal here, would be to rearrange our current equation. So, Rearranging it in the form of y, right? Again, so we're going to uh, take everything that's not y and we're going to put it on the right-hand side. So we're going to uh, take our equation and rearrange it for y or set it equal to y. So we have to do some inverse operations. So hopefully you remember your inverse operations. So first thing we do is we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. Okay. We'll subtract 2x from both sides. Whatever you do one side, you do the other. You folks remember that. Okay. minus 2x, right? And again, I don't need to see this work. Um, you can show it, but it's not necessary. All right, and then when we rearrange that, 
obviously the two x's are going to uh, divide, uh, zero principal, go down, right? And again, what we do is, the order way we uh, add and subtract, so I can 10 minus uh, 2x is equivalent to negative 2x plus 10. So uh, I've just put it in the form like some x plus b. The next step uh, you're going to do is you're going to take your next line of the equation and you're going to divide by negative 5. So we're going to divide by, oh, sorry, take this and we're going to divide by negative 5. Right? So we want to get y by itself. We do that with each we do that with each of our oh, each of our terms. So all terms have to be divided by five. That's really important. Okay. And uh, I, I mentioned it uh, when we did some of the practice there last week, but remember, make a little note to yourself here, it's really important. Um, so I'm going to make a little star here, and that's why I did this one. When we divide by a negative, let's divide or multiply, divide or multiply, I should... Uh, Put that in there. We divide or multiply by a negative number your inequality is the opposite. Okay? And that is to, because of the negative number, and again, I showed you that uh, last week, okay? So, what that indicates is, as soon as we divide these fives here, what you're going to be left with is y, and again, like I mentioned before, your inequality now becomes greater than. Now, we have a negative 2 divided by negative 5, so that's just 2 fifths x minus 2, because it's positive 10 divided by negative 5, and there is your equation that you're going to graph. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go to Desmos, and that's where I graph, okay? And I'm going to do that step by step with you uh, on how to graph, okay? And then I'll replace this graph as we see here. So to graph this line in Desmos, first thing you want to do is you want to go to the y-intercept, so if we uh, flip back, our y-intercept is negative 2, so we're going to go to negative 2, so we plot the point 0, negative 2, and you'll see that it came up there, I'm going to label that, alright, so there's our inequality, and then our next point, we're going to go, and remember, look at our slope, slope is 2 fifths, that means that we go up to right 5, okay, up to right 5, that's important. So if I go up to right 5, that gets us right on the, actually, the x-intercept, 5 and 0, oh, 5 and 0, we'll label that point as well, okay, and then we draw a line through uh, with our ruler, which is very simple. So I'm going to draw a line through with our ruler. All right. Now, since this inequality is greater than or equal to, that means that we're going to do a, and we talked about it before, our line is actually going to be a solid line. And remember, if you had just less than or, e or greater than, then we would do what we call a dashed, oh, a dashed, or dot it line. Okay? So that's new for graphing. So in this case, it can be the point that's right on the line. So we're going to graph that. So it's going to be, and then 
what's beauty, beautiful about this program called Desmos is that we can graph exactly that inequality, y greater than or equal to 2 fifths x uh, minus 2. And you'll see a line going right through. Um, I'm going to put the equal sign here first, actually. So there's a line through. And now we want to shade. So since the inequality is greater than or equal to, we shade above the line. Okay. We can also use what's called a test point. I'm going to show you that in, in a minute here. All right. So you can see that we've gone through the two points. Um, our line is solid. And we have the inequality graph. Okay. So I'm going to I'll take a picture of that and put it in our notes for us. So we have our graph here. Um, and we'll notice that this is the shaded area. So I mentioned before, because our inequality said greater than or equal to, we, uh, we shade above. That's the half we shade. So um, we can do what's called a solution. Uh, so we, we put a zero in. So we take the original equation and we put our test point zero, zero, which is the origin. Okay. All right, so there's our equation. So what we do is we fill in. 0, 0, okay, and once we fill in 0, 0, we solve the inequality, we just show the left side equal to the right side, right, so just work this out, so this would obviously be 0, right, because 2 times 0 minus 5 times 0 is 0, and this holds true, so 0 is less than or equal to 10, this is, and like I mentioned before, this is true. This is true. Oh, sorry, this is true. So we shade the area with the test point zero, 0. So that's why it shaded above. So this is just another way to figure out what area of the graph is the solution. If this is false, so if this is false, Comma. We shade the area without. So if the inequality didn't hold true, if the inequality didn't show, show true, so for example, if it said 0 was greater than or equal to 10, that would be false, therefore we would shade the other side. Okay? So it's two ways to understand how to shade the proper region. So that's it for example one. Uh, this is our first video for Math 11 for Chapter 6, Section 6.1, Example 1. In the, next video, in the next video, we'll look at Example 2. Uh, again, it won't be as detailed because that was our first one we were ever done, but we're going to do the exact same in Example 2. All right. So uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Uh, these are designed, obviously, to help you uh, get an understanding as you're graphing these. Okay. And I also, uh, I'll also take the graphic calculator out to show you how to use that for these examples as well. So thanks for watching, and I hope this helped, and have a great day, and we'll talk again soon.